Welcome, welcome, welcome. I would like to introduce you again, the Mental Health Burrito Series, We're Stopping the Stigma. Again, my name is Brandolyn Owens. I am the blogger and future author of the Mental Health Burrito. We're all about community. We're all about filling those burritos with positive things, with those things that make us feel good, those things that help us heal and bringing people together, wrapping us all up together, making each other feel well and making us feel like we are supported, okay? So with this series, we've interviewed so many wonderful people from so many different backgrounds, right? So today I'm going to introduce to you Lai Tess. She's so amazing. She comes from a coaching and hypnotherapist background. Now, not your typical mental health professional, but the jewels that she's going to drop on us today, very amazing. And I present to you, Miss Tattis. Thank you for having me, Brandon. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you for being here with us. All the way from where? Where are you located? I'm actually based in Brisbane, Australia. Wow, that's amazing. And I'm here in yeah. Durham, North Carolina. Yeah, isn't that? It is amazing to be able to talk to you on the other side of the world. Yes, absolutely amazing. So we are discussing mental health and mental illnesses. Those are two different things. Um, journeys, stories, um, different topics. And I'd like to know what you have to add to the conversation. Okay, yeah. Do you know, I think particularly with COVID, this has become a very hot topic. Um, it's, it's, if anyone was suffering any form of stress or mental health before COVID, since COVID's come about, it's just accelerated and heightened and magnified even more issues, which I think the positive of that is the awareness that it's brought up. Mm -hmm. So I think that alone is a wonderful positive that's come out of COVID. It's actually forced a lot of people to actually sit back, look for help. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times people go along and not even realize that they are in discomfort and suffering. And so they just continue to bury it or they just continue in denial and to a point where they just uh, it, it collapses in on them and they implode so I think with COVID when we look at it yes there's been some terrible terrible things that have come out of it but the yeah. upside is certainly for um, what I do it's really increased my reach to people that really do need help to get out of being stuck or um, those unhealthy states where they're in that overthinking or when they're uh, suffering that anxiety and it gets hold of them and they literally cannot function on a day-to-day -day yeah. basis. Definitely, it's, it's shown us all that there is help out there and we can access it very differently to what we would have done maybe 10, 15 years ago. So with your coaching um, and hypnotherapy, um, how do you help people? Yeah, well, I, I guess where I get a lot of people coming to me is uh, just not able to function on a daily basis. So things as simple as getting up out of bed. A lot of people will wake up feeling anxious or having panic attacks. And so it's just been able to communicate. It's been able to uh, feel motivated to be able just to, to get on and do what they need to do. It's also about having relationships. So a lot of the times they're suffering in relationships that they're having. Uh, not just with themselves, but also yeah. um, outwardly, you know, with people that they're, they're living with or in the environment. Um, so it's that, you know, um, hopelessness. They just feel that is this all there is for me? And so they yeah. just get stuck in that state and they just do not see a way out. So this is where I come along and I can help people interrupt that state of anxiety. And I know uh, for a lot of them, they get diagnosed with anxiety or depression. But from my experience, a lot of the clients that I see, they have both. Because depression is about the past. It's about ruminating of what happened in the past. It's about having mm. regrets and disappointments from the past. Rumination. It's about living life with, with meaning, yeah. So that forms depression. Anxiety is bringing that past into the future. 
and not, well, first of all, not being able to see a future and the future mm -hmm. they do see, they overthink and they bring that fear and that worry of the past into the present. Well, actually, they don't even see a present, let alone a future. So for me, a lot of the times when I'm working with clients, they have both. They have both yeah. depression and anxiety, yeah, and they do not mm -hmm. see a way out of it, yeah. Personally, um, that just hit home for me. Depression being from the past and anxiety um, being in the present. That is such a great connection. People, if you did not get that, I'll say it again. Depression, past, anxiety, present. I also suffer from major depressive disorder and anxiety disorder. And it makes a lot of sense to actually explain it to someone that way. Um, and I really do appreciate that because a lot of people don't understand the baseline, the basis, the, the meat of those two illnesses. And that's a really good way to explain it. How does uh, hypnotherapy come into play? Yeah, well, a lot of the times when we go through life, and I can talk about this for hours and hours and hours, we have experiences. If we go right back to when we were first born, those first seven years of our life, we're actually experiencing life, but we're being imprinted by a lot of our parental programming or people that have um, major influences in our life, typically they're our parents. So we're actually imprinted by them. So we're actually adopting a lot of their uh, patterns, their programming, mm -hmm. a lot of their beliefs, a lot of their values. And, and then we hit the age of seven to 14. And between those years, we're actually modeling behaviors. So we go through a phase where we start to model behaviors of parents, siblings, other relatives, even neighbors, teachers, even superheroes. So we model these behaviors. Now, quite often parents will think, you know, we hide things from children, we explain that, or we won't, you know, show that, or we, we'll hide this from them. But subconsciously, there's so many things that they're picking up. And this is yeah. the thing about the power of the subconscious. The subconscious is 96% of brain power. Our conscious thought, our conscious part of our mind is 4%. So quite often we're consciously using uh, forced positive energy to mm -hmm. think positively, to do things, you know, like, you know, no, we know we had this continual dialogue and this argument saying, I oh, know I need to do this. Why can't I? And so we're trying forcefully with willpower, using only 4% of our conscious capacity to make mm -hmm. changes in our life. However, the subconscious from those very early years has got every memory, everything that we've ever experienced in a memory file. Mm. And attached to those experiences, and this is where it's explained to a lot of my, my clients that I work with, attached to those experiences are meanings. So everything that we've ever experienced, our subconscious attaches a meaning to it. Mm. And attached to the meaning are emotions. And it's the emotions that drive our behavior. And mm. so when we go through life and something will happen, and we get so triggered. True. It's the emotions, I call them emotional hooks that get triggered. So our subconscious goes back into the memory file. We'll bring up a memory, all right, that happened in the past. It's got the meaning attached to it and all these emotions attached to it. And then we react instantly. We react instantly and quite often we think, oh my goodness, I'm going through this again and again and again. And we don't know how to change it because it's a subconscious programming and response that's been developed, that's trapped in there and we mm -hmm. don't know what it is. Yeah, and consciously we think we don't want to behave that way. We don't. Why, why do we want to keep being angry? Why do yeah. we keep wanting you know, to judge ourselves? Why do we keep wanting to sabotage ourselves? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the how do we break out of that? And quite often, that's where we get stuck. We just don't know how to do that. Yeah, yeah. 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 So what I do is I help people by going back into the subconscious, bring up whatever it needs to bring up to be healed. Because these things mm. are quite often past when we've experienced trauma. You know, it could be even something we, we called a name or we're told, oh, we're stupid. Even something like that, as a child, it's extremely hurtful and, yeah. and we hold on to that and we form childhood wounds and we bring that into our adult psyche. Yeah, so quite often you may have heard that term, I'll oh, stop being childish or mm -hmm. grow up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, there's or a, stop a, acting like a baby. Yes, exactly. And there's an element of truth to that because that part of us, that inner child is always with us. 
And if we don't heal that part, that wound that we, that we developed as a child, it plays out over and over again as we're full grown adults. Yeah. yeah. By default, we don't know that we're doing it, we just do it. And it's, you know, those, those echoes from the past come in loud and clear through that inner critic, through that self-sabotaging voice, you know, that we hold as, as a child. So we believe that to be a truth. In actual fact, it's not. It's not a truth at all. It's something we've adopted, something that yeah. we've learned. And the beautiful thing about that is we can actually unlearn it and we can Wow. Become... Yeah. And it's a process, but it is a beautiful process, yeah. And I guess that's what I do. I do. I get in there and I work with the subconscious to release what it needs to release to be healed. Because we all need that healing. Because when, mm-hmm. we, when we don't, those emotions and things, all we do is we bury them alive. When we wow. bury them alive, that's when we get this ease in the body. Yeah, that's when we wow. experience comfort. Yeah. Wow. And so when we can release that and heal, right, then we become more resourceful. So when life happens, because we're always going to get triggered, there's always going to be events, there's always going to be someone else that projecting their insecurities or their stuff, right? And we get triggered, but when we yeah. become resourceful, then we know right, how to work through it instead of being stuck in it. Yeah. And that's when we come from a place of empowerment. So mm-hmm. when we're stuck in that disempowerment, we're hopeless. We cannot see a way out of it and we just start thinking these things like, well, what's the point? You know, this is all I'm meant to be. You know, this is yes. what's it. You know, our family, we, we never succeed. You know, we start yeah. creating stories and these rules that we live yes. by may keep us stuck. Uh, so I don't know whether that made sense, but I, I love what I do. It and I does. tend to, like I said, I can speak about this for hours and hours and yeah. hours. But, you know, what I do is, is if I can have a conversation with someone and they can just connect to some part of themselves that's buried here in the subconscious and bring that up and just just spark it and just connect and understand that, you know what, right, it's not your fault. Mm-hmm. It's not your fault. Because we a lot of people pretty, need to hear that. Beating ourselves. Well, you know, we beat ourselves up. You know, like I, I grew up and I was bullied and I was abused in a, in a marriage and, and I was called names and, you know, you know, it's it's the physical abuse you can get over, like the body will heal. Yes. It's mental and emotional that stays stuck in our subconscious and that's what plays out over and over again and we form these beliefs. And I and it wasn't until I did, went through my own healing and transformation that I realised that wasn't my fault. No, you know, I didn't know that yeah, that was someone else projecting their experiences and their stuff. Yeah. On to that, you. Yeah, yeah. And that's what formed a lot of my stories and my beliefs of myself and kept me stuck. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we don't know any other way. Yeah. So yeah. when we can connect and understand that it's not our fault, you know, we experienced something, we formed a belief or, or took on someone else's belief, someone else's self-sabotage. Yeah. Yeah. So when we can connect to that, that's where we can start the process of healing. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's, and that's the, literally the first step with, with, with when I work with someone is bringing that awareness and that understanding and showing them that there is hope. Hope is uh, yeah. one of those things we, we put in our burritos, you know. Yeah. Like that, you know, I, I came up with, with the term when I was eating a burrito and I was self-sabotaging myself loudly. Brandolin, you aren't a good mother. Brandolin, you aren't this. Brandolin, why um, are you here seeking treatment? I mean, I was just self-sabotaging, negative self-talk. And um, out of that became the mental health burrito because I didn't want to live my life with all of these negative things, ingesting them, believing them, and living them. Because if you believe it, that's how your life is going to go. You're going to project it. You're going to believe it. You're going to live in that fashion. Everyone around you is going to know it. Everyone around you may be affected by your lifestyle um, if you don't take care of yourself. 
I absolutely love this conversation. Is there um, anywhere that we can find you? Because I would love to share your information with the viewers. Yeah, I've got a website. Uh, my name, Lai Tattis, L-A-I-T-A-T-T-I-S dot com. And on there, if you go to the contact, I actually offer a discovery call. So that's an opportunity just to have a talk to me and just uncover something mm -hmm. that you have locked away that will just help give you hope. And there's two things that are another ingredient that if I can add to your burrito, it's faith. Mm -hmm. you know, it's faith. Yeah, that those are two powerful things that we can bring into our psyche, into our awareness to help us mm -hmm. get out of that discomfort. Yeah. So Absolutely. So definitely, so on on there, I've, I mean, I've got my story, but I do offer a, uh, an opportunity just to have a chat. And quite often for a lot of people, that the, the start of the healing process is to be heard. Mm -hmm. and understood. Yeah. And you know, like sometimes we want to release because when we don't release it, we hold on to it and we bury it. All right. It's like what you mentioned before about ingesting. It becomes out of us yeah and quite often we need to let that go and you said something so beautiful before about you know how it affects people around us what we experience what we experience also gets passed on to our children when we heal ourselves we're not just healing ourselves we're healing the next generation and when you're yes. a parent or you're influencing other children like underneath and around you that's mm -hmm. a power a really and I learned that through, you know, myself, through my own healing, because I adopt parental uh, programming traits from my parents, and I've got a very, very close relationship with my parents. Even though I've got a close relationship and I heal, whenever I work with clients, I heal both mother and father. Mm -hmm. and heal those. Sometimes the parents do things from a place of love. Yeah. You know, like my parents, for instance, because I got bullied, because I come out to Australia, my dad met my mum in the Vietnam War, and because he, he's Australian. And he brought her out yeah. here to Australia. And so therefore, you know, we got bullied and I was very different. I was, uh -huh. you know, the very few that looked different. I was a half and half. And so I got bullied. My parents, whenever I got a compliment, but they would go, oh, no, 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 there's always someone better. There's always someone smarter. There's always someone prettier. And so what that did was it made me painfully shy. And my belief on myself was, well, I'm not good enough. You know, I can't speak up because I'm not meant to be heard. And if I if I speak up, then I get attention. They thought they were raising me the, the life of hard knocks. You know, we're, we're preparing for you that these things happen. So you, we can't put you up there with this strong belief. So what they were actually doing was through love was protecting me. But what that did was put a wall around me. Yeah, yeah. and it formed beliefs and it formed a story that I had from a child that I mm -hmm. held on to as an adult. That was a beautiful intention. And another one is working with a client that his parents, everything is hard work, even relationships. Relationships are hard work. No relationship comes easy, it's hard work. So he went from relationship to relationship to relationship, sabotaging, because any time it was feeling good or was easy, he started mm -hmm. to sabotage it. Because he had this belief, it's gotta be hard work. If it's not hard work, well then it's not worth having. Yeah. So yeah. it wasn't until he released that and started to understand that no, it's not hard work. Yeah, it, it is many other things like communicating, expressing, it's about understanding, it's about compassion. Yeah. They're the ingredients of having a healthy relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. We can form a lot of these beliefs from a place of love, but as adults, we need to disconnect from those beliefs that we grew up with, that we can now become our ideal self. As the person yes. that we are forming our own beliefs and of us and the world that we live in yeah, and not hanging Absolutely. on to those beliefs. I totally we agree. Totally agree. So we have so many viewers right now. And of course, here on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, what is one thing that you want to leave the viewers with? One thing. But if they didn't get anything else out of this interview, out of our talk, what is one thing you want them to get out of our talk? I guess the one thing that I do when I talk to a lot of clients is I can give them a few little aha moments. But when they actually listen to some clients that have been through the journey of healing and transformation, 
they can put themselves in it. Mm. And on my YouTube channel, I, I've gotten a lot better at getting some testimonials from clients, speaking from their heart, with their voice. And when people can hear that and put themselves in that and believe that, you know what, there is hope and faith that if they can do it, maybe I can do it. Maybe I can mm -hmm. do it. Maybe I can move into a much better place and onto the journey where I can experience some freedom. The place that I would send people to is few of the testimonials so that they can understand and just hear from other people. Because quite often I can get so passionate about things. And, and one thing that I love when I'm talking to people is talking about stories, about real life people, so they can yes. connect. And I think that's so powerful because they don't want to hear from someone that hasn't experienced pain or hasn't yeah. experienced suffering. But to hear it from someone that's walked through that and gotten to the other side, I think that's a really powerful place mm -hmm, to start mm -hmm, mm -hmm. developing your own hope. Yeah. So that's probably the place that I would send people to. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have uh, shared your YouTube channel, your Instagram, and your website with our viewers so they know where to find you. And I'm so appreciative of your time, um, this space that you created for us. Didn't have to, but you did anyway. And we're so appreciative. We here at the Mental Health Burrito, we share stories. We tell stories. We honor stories. We honor you. We honor the good things, the bad things, the hard times, the good times. We honor each and every one of you. The silent ones, you know who you are. You're sitting back and you're watching and you might be suffering and you don't know where to begin. Um, check out our Facebook pages. Send us a message. We can give you some resources that can help you or maybe one of us can help. I'm just an advocate, not just. I am an advocate. I am an advocate for you. And Lay is also an advocate and a professional life coach and hypnotherapist. She also works virtually. Ladies and gentlemen, him, her, they, his, hers, everyone, all inclusive. We hope that you enjoyed this interview. We hope that you got something out of it. We want you to feel like you are part of the Mental Health Burrito family. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please drop those. We would love to hear from you. Make sure you check out her blog, her website, and her YouTube channel. I just saw a video that I can't wait to see about narcissists. <laughs> <laughs> because I am researching those now and oh boy um, that's a hot topic for me I'll be writing about that soon um, narcissist narcissistic yeah. personality so we'll leave you with this and thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for commenting. Thank you. And thank you for engaging with us. Thank you, Miss Tattis. We I so you. appreciate your time. Everyone, until next time, have a great day. Bye.